Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. Um, thank you to our viewers, listeners, joining us today. Um, another episode of We Are One. As per our tradition, we will start our program today with the recitation of the Holy Quran, and it will be f uh, with the translation as well. So just bear with me, we will get this underway. <laughs> الرسول فضلنا بعدهم على بعد منهم من كلم الله ورفع بعدهم درجات وآتينا عيسى بن مريم البينات وأيدناه بروح القدس These messengers have we exalted, some of them above others. Among them there are those to whom Allah spoke, and some of them he exalted by degrees of rank. And we gave Jesus, son of Mary, clear proofs and strengthened him and strengthened him with the spirit of holiness <laughs> And if Allah had so willed, those that came after them would not have fought with one another after clear signs had come to them, but they did disagree. Of them were some who believed, and of them were some who disbelieved. And if Allah had so willed, they would not have fought with one another. But Allah does what He desires. Ya ayyuhalladheena amanu anfiqu mimma razaqnaakum min qabli an yaatiya yawm ayyatiya yawmun la bay'un fihi wa la khullatun wa la shafa'a wal kafirun humun zalimun O ye who believe, spend out of what we have bestowed on you before the day comes, wherein there shall be no buying and selling, nor friendship, nor intercession, and it is those who disbelieve that do wrong to themselves. 
Thank you to our listeners and viewers. Um, I hope uh, those melodious Arabic voice coming through in the translation had uh, some beautiful meanings associated with it. As we always say in our program to all our viewers and listeners, we do like your feedback. Uh, we do like to hear what do you think of our program. You can reach us on 0800 letter Y Islam or info at ahmadiyya.org.nz. We more than welcome to take your call or any email that you wish to send to us, uh, we can kindly address for you. Moving further along with our program today, um, we do have a special guest in the studio who has actually traveled from Auckland and um, he is the Vice National President of the Ahmadiyya Muslim Community in New Zealand and he is also the Executive Chairman for Humanity First New Zealand. So I welcome uh, Yunus Hanif to the program. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullah and uh, greetings to our listeners and viewers as well. Thank you, Yunus, uh, for joining me today. Um, first and foremost, um, making this trip to Marston, Wadarap, a beautiful region that we live in. Um, just briefly, I uh, would like to know more about probably your current role as national president, what, you, what your duties are. And if you can give us a bit of a history around Humanity First, um, its origination, and then probably some of the work carried out in New Zealand. Thank you. Yes, uh, firstly, in my role as the National Vice President, I work within the, uh, my uh, specific role is working with the regional branches of the community and just uh, being a liaison with them in terms of assisting them with their, uh, I guess, uh, governance and programs that they run and just ensuring that the community members are you know getting the support and uh, requirements uh, from their local sort of uh, uh, brand uh, uh, communities and branches and also just ensuring that we maintain the uh, connection with our head office in, in Auckland as well. In terms of humanity first so I've had the honor and privilege and uh, most humbly been acting as the executive chairman for the last uh, I think couple of three years now so certainly a very rewarding and uh, um, a role that we have uh, I have in that uh, space in terms of humanity first itself so just I'll cover off uh, quickly very briefly the uh, uh, what it is about and like uh, the Sheikh has mentioned uh, cover off what we do in New Zealand so essentially humanity first is a, a charitable trust which uh, has been established to promote and safeguard human life and dignity. It is a non-political and a non-religious uh, and a non-secretarian international re relief and development agency that works, to, works mostly with the world's poorest and most vulnerable people. Effectively, the, um, the organization was formed in 1995 in the UK and stems from the refu uh, uh, a need to support the refugees. Initially, they were coming out from the Balkan wars in Europe. So our community uh, leader at the time recognized the need to support those refugees. So he asked that a separate uh, entity be established in the UK initially to support those refugees, mostly in Germany, that were flooding from the Balkan states into, into Germany. However, since then, in 1995, we're in our 26th year now. So uh, the, um, the organization has now been in operation in 58 countries and has projects in many more other countries as well. Uh, most of our workers and the management of Humanity First are unpaid volunteers and our administrative expenses are pretty much negligible. Uh, we are able to deliver significantly more aid value in the field than the funds we raise through volunteers collaboration in global sourcing. If you think about most of the major disasters over the last 25 years, Humanity First has been present in most of those. If you think about the devastation of earthquakes and flooding in the Southeast Asian countries like Pakistan, India, Nepal, and also a lot of work that's done in Africa as well, the organization runs a number of hospitals and schools 
uh, and uh, one more uh, one recent uh, hospital was um, established in Guatemala where it supports the South American community from neighboring countries as well in terms of delivering a cost effective healthcare services to the communities in in, in that in that region uh, i mentioned africa and those uh, countries as well so a number of schools and hospitals are there uh, in particular we run a water for life program in africa whereby we sus provide sustainable drinking water to those communities by building water wells and boreholes through boreholes etc and also education uh, a drive there to ensure we have uh, you know accessible education for the most vulnerable as well in terms of our presence in new zealand we were formally established in 2007 and in order to support our international uh, uh, partners uh, uh, overseas uh, we fundraised for projects uh, in Asia and the flood, uh, etc., that I mentioned earlier. We were quite prevalent in supporting the relief efforts in Christchurch during the earthquake, uh, the Pike River mine disaster, and also uh, disasters, that, uh, in particular, uh, supporting efforts uh, for relief of uh, through or after floods in Fiji, in Samoa, and more recently when we had the. Uh, tsunami in uh, Tonga as well, so we've uh, contributed towards that. We have also assisted with uh, settlement of refugees in New Zealand by providing uh, supplies to families in need. We also run uh, have run school breakfast program prior to the government uh, running that initiative in lower socioeconomic areas, particularly in South Auckland. One of the largest uh, sort of areas we do quite a bit of work and more so since uh, COVID has been the um, supply of food packs and rations to families uh, in the most needy areas. We would work with partners in Auckland who provide us with these goods and through donations to provide food packs uh, and approximately 100 parcels uh, food packs a week that we do which consists of fruits, vegetables, meat and also dry goods as well. Uh, we've also worked with some of the larger uh, community organizations such as Auckland City Mission in Auckland by providing them with uh, uh, you know donations in uh, not in kind but also in funds to support the effort that they have in uh, supporting families uh, in need as well. Um, I mentioned earlier we do uh, food packs on a weekly basis uh, in Auckland um, providing you know over the COVID period some tens of thousands of meals, uh, fruits and vegetables as well as um, you know uh, dry goods as well so these are some of the uh, things that we are doing at the moment um, our intention is that over the next uh, few next few years we continue to uh, continue this effort as uh, most will be aware that given the current economic conditions the the need is even greater to support uh, the most vulnerable in the community so we intend to continue doing that as well as working with other partners to support other uh, efforts uh, of uh, demonstrating human sort of uh, uh, support and making sure people that are most vulnerable in the community are uh, supported as much as possible. So that's a little bit about uh, Humanity First. Uh, thank you, that's, uh, that's a good insight on Humanity First and some of the um, great projects that's been carried out. I guess um, as we look into the future, as you mentioned, these are some difficult times. Uh, people are uh, you know, recession is high, inflation is on the rise. I mean, in terms of some of the vulnerable community you see out there, what are the challenges are you having trying to, I guess, logistically help them? So what are the things, uh, or what are the things you can do or make it better for their livelihoods while we get things back on track? Especially, I'm more talking about New Zealand as such, yeah. So I, I think if I give a, a better background, so we, we, we tend not to just only get people that are the most vulnerable, but even, you know, sort of uh, hardworking New Zealanders that are make, having difficulty in making ends meet. So we, uh, I guess, have a spectrum of that uh, from the most vulnerable to those people that are also, you know, uh, that are simply having difficulty to make ends meet. So. Um, you know, we can, I guess, uh, never do enough. Um, and of course, uh, with the limited resources we have, we try and do as best as we can. We work with a fairly generous partner in Auckland called Fairfood New Zealand. So they're an organisation that um, 
um, you know, collects uh, sort of through various channels like supermarkets, grocers, uh, uh, food that would otherwise end up in the landfill. Good stuff that otherwise would end up in landfill just because of the fact that can no, no longer be sustained in the supermarket. So they collect that and then on a weekly basis we go and get that from them and other, together with other charities and then we box them up into parcels and then work with other community organisations who um, uh, support uh, the vulnerable in the community and do that. So that's sort of a weekly task we have uh, with the volunteers in Auckland. Ideally, we would like to expand that um, and with the reach expanding in uh, other regions for our community, we'd like to uh, hopefully get a similar program happening in those areas as well. So that's probably the, the plan. Um, to get them there, um, but yeah, we we getting people that unfortunately are people that are not you know in the best state in terms of their living. Um, apart from food packs, we also try and do a uh, um, monthly cooked meal uh, program as well. So we work with a charity in West Auckland where we provide meals uh, to uh, vulnerable families, cooked meals there, and uh, periodically over the months uh, we also do other cooking that and provide cooked meals to that. Um, we've also started a program uh, with the University of Auckland um, Students Association um, just during the time of COVID where we would provide cooked meals to sort of students who were also struggling. Um, that has sort of um, dropped off a little bit with COVID and now that the schools are, uh, universities are now closing, but that was something else we were working with as well. Uh, so those are probably the key things that we've been doing. Yeah. No, that's great. You know, it looks like uh, there's a lot of activity going on and uh, and a lot of hard work behind the scenes to execute all these programs. Uh, in terms of, say, to our vis listeners and viewers, just to get a little bit of more, where how can they be part of this? What are the means they can contribute, I guess, or show they um, support in helping this program? What 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 do you suggest? Sure. So there's, I guess, uh, two main things. One is um, we tend to get a lot of uh, donations in kind of uh, food items and uh, you know dry goods or whatever it may well be, uh, meat, etc., which can then be used to then support the community uh, that is most in need. So that's one thing. Uh, secondly, uh, through volunteering. So, you know, there's never enough people around to help. So uh, we have a limited pool of people that help. So if people are able to reach out and uh, contribute in terms of their labor, that's often a, a really good sort of source of that. And then the obvious one is obviously monetary support. So Humanity First New Zealand is a charitable, registered charitable entity in New Zealand. So our governance is uh, sort of uh, managed through the the rules and regulations of the Charities Commission, so we are a proper charitable trust, so any donations that you provide uh, from a monetary perspective has full, uh, full accountability and, and the appropriate and uh, correct reporting in terms of the, the laws of uh, New Zealand, so that's, I guess, the, the best and most convenient. Often people are not able to sort of uh, do it any other way, so, you know, we're quite happy to share the the bank account details and details of the charity uh, through yourself uh, and this program, then we can certainly utilize those funds for, for you know, uh, means. And as I mentioned earlier, we don't have any paid uh, uh, people running the organization. Everything is on a voluntary basis. I would say 90 to 95 percent of it goes and touches um, the the most needy in terms of the funds and you know a small amount to just from a running expenses point of view for you know cost for for running the organization so you know the maximum amount is applied towards the actual uh, people that need the the most uh, uh, in terms of uh, whatever is re whatever programs we run so yeah that's the in that's the intention uh, thank you you know that has really um you know given a a great picture I guess in terms of uh, the people of Wairarapa, Master and uh, the entire region uh, looking at Carterton, Greytown because um, when you drive along the highway you'll see these boxes where people 
put donations and charities. I think um, you can also increase your footprint around this region as well. And uh, um, like we're part of the Ahmadiyya Muslim community, I'm happy to, you know, work with uh, if people are happy to volunteer in this region to create a little program, we can reach out to you and probably get something going in this region for future. That's that's great. Uh, just with our listeners and viewers, um, we'll just divert from this conversation and we will come back to Yunus and ask a few more questions later. But I thought to just put in a short documentary about Humanity First. Um, this is really um, giving you a little bit of bigger picture what's been happening around um, on the scene of Humanity First. Humanity First Telethon 2020. Saturday, the 19th of September 2020, marked the global telethon for Humanity First, with activities around the world marking 25 years of serving humanity. On the Friday sermon delivered on the 28th of August 1992, Hazrat Khalifa al-Masih Rabe, Rahmaullah Ta'ala, gave his guidance to the Ahmadiyya Muslim community to set up an independent organization which would help humanity within the frameworks of the values of the Ahmadiyya Muslim community to serve on the basis of need alone, irrespective of race, gender, religion or age. Work began soon after and later in 1995, Humanity First was officially registered in the UK, which is why this year marks the 25th anniversary. Hence, as a Jamaat, we have always strived to fulfill our duty of serving others for the sake of Allah the Almighty. And we are doing this in different ways and through various means according to our abilities. We seek to feed those who are hungry. We seek to give water to those who are thirsty and we seek to care for those who are sick or suffering in any way and to provide them with suitable treatment as you have already seen in your some of the uh, short footage. Thus all of you who are serving the humanity first uh, humanity first must remember that this is your purpose and so with great devotion you should ex um, expend your energies for the sake of this blessed cause. Certainly it was to fulfill this objective of serving others selflessly for which Humanity First was established. This is what sets out apart from other organizations <clears throat> as, uh, is what sets you apart from other organizations because you are not serving in humanity first only due to your good nature or as a worldly duty rather your service is actually a demand and calling of your faith. As I have explained, serving humanity is a fundamental tenet of Islam. Islam requires us to bandage the wounds of those in pain, to remove the anxieties of those who are distressed, and to show love and compassion without any desire for recognition or worldly reward. Thus, wherever any person is suffering or facing cruelty, it is your duty to be there to help and support them. Always try to increase your output and never become lazy or satisfied with your past achievements. Instead, your targets should always be to elevate the standards of uh, care provided by Humanity First through increased service and by helping as many people as possible. 
The telethon was a 24-hour event across the 58 registered branches, during which many countries ran live feeds or events to raise awareness of our activities and to help raise vital funds. The day began in New Zealand, where the team distributed 160 food rations in Auckland. Later in the morning, Indonesia began their live feed from their studios, whilst also running a blood drive locally in support of COVID relief efforts. Bangladesh held an event marking the 25 years in Dhaka. In Mauritius, the team ran a live event, including free medical checks and a blood drive to help local health services, and had put up a billboard on the street marking the anniversary. The first of the European live feeds began in Germany, covering works across Eastern Europe and many parts of Africa, such as Benin and Sao Tome, where a new hospital is under construction. There was also a message of support from the Minister of Health in Kosovo. Into the afternoon, the Middle East ran an awareness session with active involvement from Sierra Leone, who had also planted a thousand cashew trees and provided 500 warm meals for orphans near the capital, Freetown. Other European telethon feeds went live in France and Sweden. France showcased the homeless support projects in Paris, Strasbourg and other cities and also raised funds for projects in Niger, while Sweden highlighted their COVID relief work in the cities of Gothenburg, Malmo and Stockholm. The Netherlands ran a joint live event with South Africa, for whom they were raising funds. And alongside the telethon feed, the teams were simultaneously distributing food to a homeless shelter in Amsterdam and to hundreds of vulnerable families in Cape Town, Durban and Johannesburg. The UK team ran a telethon with live interviews from across Africa and the Middle East, as well as covering a feature on the new hospital in the Ivory Coast, which is currently under construction. There were live segments from the new food bank in Merfield in West Yorkshire, which is already providing a vital source for the local community. Many other countries were also doing awareness campaigns and fundraising, including Austria, Belgium, Norway, Switzerland and Denmark. Guinea-Bissau also ran their own telethon and also distributed over one tonne of rice in Bo for families affected by floods. Across Africa, the local teams had done a great job raising awareness locally. In Ghana, the team had been doing blood donations and street cleaning in Wa and Bolkatanga and put up a billboard on the main highway near Kasoa. The Kenyan team ran a menstrual hygiene training session for girls in Kawapso. The Ugandan team had distributed 200 maternity packs for expectant mothers in Kampala and Nyanga. Many of these teams attracted media coverage from TV, radio and print media. Into the evening, the USA and Canada began their telethon feeds, including live feeds from partner countries where they are supporting projects such as the Nasser Hospital in Guatemala and projects in Haiti, Belize and Guyana. Congresswoman Norma Tors was very passionate about the work of the USA team in her home country of Guatemala. I congratulate you for achieving 25 years of promoting and safeguarding human life and dignity. There were messages of support from senior dignitaries in the USA and Canada, including the Prime Minister of Canada himself. Alhamdulillah, the telethon day was a major success and raised over $4 million towards projects including the ongoing response to coronavirus where Humanity First is responding in 77 countries. Across over 50 countries, this became Humanity First Day. Humanity First would like to thank all of their volunteers and donors, without whom Humanity First could not be effective. Viewers can find out more about the work of Humanity First at their international website www humanityfirst.org Thank you to our viewers and listeners so uh, there's a little bit of more insight around uh, Humanity First and some of the projects carried out globally and the whole telethon uh, was quite um, 
eventful as well. I do have a question for Eunice, though. Um, I think it's more around the lines of, uh, again, recession and the challenges we had had around COVID. And the very recent one that really comes to mind, the Ukraine war. So, you know, it's just um, reaching out to you. If you can probably give us um, any insight around human first and their involvement in the Ukraine war. Yes, absolutely. Uh, the, uh, the team in um, uh, Europe is quite active in that space. So at the border with uh, Poland, where the refugees were coming in from Ukraine, the the organization has a food store there providing um, hot meals uh, uh, you know on a 24-hour basis to refugees that are coming in and also with some of the resettlement efforts uh, in Europe as well as the refugees are coming in so certainly there has been a big push to uh, to do uh, to do that as well and, and I should uh, mention also more recently uh, the devastation of floods in Pakistan, quite a bit of uh, work has gone in there. And in fact, in New Zealand, we were able to contribute to, uh, through um, running some uh, uh, fundraising efforts to donate some funds there as well. Okay. Now, that's great. So uh, looks like if we look at Humanity First, uh, we have purely volunteers who are running this organization. Um, it's charitable. It's it's a organization where uh, all humans should feel the pain of other human being, and I think that's been the motto of Ahmadiyya Muslim community as well: love for all, hatred and for none, and to save um, humanity. I guess. So, uh, looking at uh, today's discussion around uh, humanity first, people, um, peace, some of these words that I'm using today. It's kind of lacking, you know, if you look at the society out there, I think uh, one of our leaders just mentioned up there selflessness, rather people are more selfish. So I think, again, it's it's time where we all need to step up, especially in New Zealand. Uh, like you said, there's a lot of vulnerable communities out there, not just people who are vulnerable without jobs, but people who are actually in the workforce also are suffering. Absolutely. So maybe you could talk a little bit more what what uh, you know challenges are there but what can we do to make it better i guess yes i mean i think it's uh, it's quite easy to often not do anything because and you find hundreds of reasons not to do it it just takes a bit of personal effort and commitment to make sure that uh, you you make the time and the effort and the commitment to to give back to society and and i think what tends to happen is that if we do that then it just helps with the not just from an economic condition point of view but just the general well-being of society as well tends to improve so if you help helping the vulnerable which means you're helping families that are able to then help their families in terms of their kids etc then those kids are protected they don't have the 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 it stops them from getting disengaged and then leading to crime all those sort of things so it starts with uh, you know and it becomes a stop for those sort of things as well so the fact that if you are making the effort to improve the economic and condition of the individuals then it tends to then overall benefit society as well it stops all the other vulnerable people from uh, having to resort to means that would be you know sometimes down the wrong path to achieve a certain outcomes so i think it uh, just requires a bit of personal effort and i think in new zealand as a country if you think about it we've uh, we've got very generous people we've got very generous sort of people in terms of not just helping others but innovative people as well so i think you know there's a, a core element in our sort of uh, dna generally in our society here that people do want to help sometimes they probably perhaps don't know where to go to or where they can engage with and it's not always money you know and often people think oh you know they have this perception that oh you know we don't know where this money goes or that sort of thing so the fact that you get can get involved personally and actually as the term goes get your hands dirty with uh, contributing then you get to see it at the very grassroots level as to how this benefits society and it's never a case of oh this won't make a difference or oh, what i give or whatever won't make a, difference. make a difference every small bit helps it just you know fills in the bucket uh, in terms of you know a little drop in the ocean but 
it does make a difference. And I think um, also, you know, most people are busy. They've got their own lives. But I think, uh, you know, for me personally, if I can share, uh, very grateful to have a very supportive employer as well. On Friday afternoons, basically, I go and I pick up the uh, the goods and stuff that I mentioned earlier and then make give uh, those parcels out. It's a very good end to the week uh, from a personal satisfaction point of view. So all the stresses, all the business of that week with work, family, everything, concludes really positively in, up, in, a, in an uplifting way by contributing to society. So I think I'll encourage people that, you know, find an hour or two in the uh, week or in the month or whatever to just, uh, you know, encourage yourself, your families. And also, yeah, you know, do it as a family so that it becomes an event where you also um, uh, connecting with your own families and friends. So the thing, make that as a bit of a, you know, an eventful exercise versus just being another chore for for you. So I think, I think it's just about creating some personal commitment towards it. I think you know that's been really great to hear, and again to our listeners and viewers, uh, it gives a great opportunity if you do want to get involved with the Humanity Fest program. Again, reach out to us. Um, I'm, I'm pretty sure uh, in the next phase of the question, I'll probably get Yunus to share his details, email address, um, so that you can take a note. Sorry, um, if I can find something on the website, I will definitely play that. But I uh, will do come to Yunus uh, for further questions before we close out our program today. On that note, um, as per our tradition in this our program, we are one. If you do have any burning questions, or anything relating to the program today, reach out to us on 0800 letter Y Islam or email us info at ahmedia.org.nz. So sit back, um, viewers, listeners, um, I'll play a beautiful poem uh, to just uh, set the scene for our next stage of uh, questioning with the Yunus.
you to our listeners and viewers uh, you know that was quite fitting actually what we have been discussing today in the poem just really cemented our conversation so do you want to elaborate a little bit on that absolutely i think uh, going back to the address of uh, our leader earlier we talked about the uh, principles of our faith uh, and uh, 
worthy being of humanity in supporting the vulnerable and the poor and also making sure our fellow human beings live with dignity and with, you know, um, you know, if we look around the world, there's enough resources and everything available. Uh, there's en enough out there for everyone. It's a case that some have been blessed with more than the others, but those that have been blessed with more, I guess some responsibility falls on them to ensure that whatever they have, they are able to share with others as well. And by doing that, that even increases more of their own. So, so you know, some have been given that, not just that opportunity, but that responsibility as well to ensure that, uh, you know, that um, just because I have a little bit more, uh, that I'm stable, uh, I'm, uh, that they are able to share with those that may not necessarily have been <laughs> provided for to that same degree. So I think uh, very uh, fitting and very much the principles of uh, our community and of our people and encouraging the, um, the, the community to ensure that, you know, that, that they're just not being selfish and thinking about themselves, but also having an eye, eye out for the community, uh, the wider community. And also, I think the important thing here is also to realize it's for all of humanity. I know, you know, we don't want to restrict to say that it's only for the energy community or whatever, you know, it's certainly not the case. It's our responsibility as humans without any bias for, uh, you know, race, religion, um, gender, or anything like that, color, and that we simply, as a human being, have responsibility for our fellow human beings and we try and fulfill those responsibilities to the best of our ability. You know, one key thing before we close off today, what's that one message you would like to share with our viewers and listeners and also closing off with your contact details, if you can give one solid message to our viewers in Wairarapa. Sure, absolutely. Look, um, the thing for me is that, uh, as I said earlier, New Zealand is a society that has, you know, if we use the term that we uh, punch way beyond our weight in most things around uh, the world, you know, if you think of all the successful people that have come out of New Zealand in the field of not just science uh, so, and not in just in the field of sports etc but also in terms of innovation and everything like that and also the generosity that's provided by New Zealanders you know my organization uh, that I work for in my professional career Perpetual Guardian we run some 600 odd charitable trust and I think about the generosity that has been left by a number of people uh, in perpetuity for people to benefit from is just amazing so we certainly do punch above our weight in that sphere as well in terms of our charitable giving so my message to the community out here is to say that in that same spirit please uh, you know reach out and and also see that uh, you are able to contribute in whatever small way you can towards helping and we already see it here in Masterton a community that has been um, uh, has had refugees settled here in Masterton is an example of the generosity of the people of uh, the Wararapa um, and uh, it's, uh, it's already there so the, the the seed has already been sown it's a matter of now just taking it to the next step so I hope that uh, today has given people in inspiration to sort of um, take account of themselves and see if they can you know keep growing that uh, seed into a more beautiful plant and uh, to bear fruits in the future and I guess the question I leave for people is what legacy are you going to be leaving behind for your generation to then inspire them to sort of uh, make sure that your legacy continues as well. In terms of my contact I think uh, with the days of technology the best is probably email so I'll repeat uh, that uh, as slowly as I can so it's a uh, Eunice which is spelled Y-U-N-U-S dot hanif h a n i f at news nz dot humanity first dot org dot nz um, so i'll leave those contact details with uh, the host Shriek here as well and uh, my mobile number as well uh, which is zero two seven four four one zero one nine eight so if you ever feel the need to get in touch or if you think you can contribute in a way or alternately if you have people out there that uh, need some uh, assistance that you think would benefit from contacting Humanity First New Zealand then please reach out uh, with those contact details or alternately if it's easier uh, through the program here then we'll be more than happy to uh, be connected and uh, uh, catch up 
although I'm based in Auckland, I'm more than happy to sort of, uh, you know, I do travel with my work, so I'm more than happy and uh, often visit uh, this region as well. So hopefully we can connect at some stage as well. Thank you, Eunice. Um, look, on that note, uh, we are coming to a close to the program. Um, look, in terms of uh, the inside, the contact details, I think uh, just probably on the side note that probably uh, the name resembles as well. He's also my older brother. <laughs> so uh, thank you, Eunice. Um, a special thank you for coming to the program today. Um, and I really appreciate your time. Uh, thank you to our listeners and viewers. So we will uh, probably um, finish off here today. Um, and <clears throat> please join me in the next session. We are one. Kia ora. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu.